assalamu alaikum the topic of today's lecture is semiconductor diode my name is dr amishadad and i have made these slides from the material of electronic devices and circuit theory book by robert boyster diode is the first and most simpler device we discuss in this course uh which is made by joining p type and n type material we have already discussed uh, how to construct p type material and n type material these are made actually by the process of doping p type materials are formed by adding trivalent impurity to the base material while the n type materials are formed by adding pentavalent impurity to the base material if the base material is silicon then we can say that the device is made by uh, made with uh, silicon material or you can just simply say it's a silicon diode so the semiconductor diode is formed by simply bringing p type and n type materials together using certain techniques the electrons and holes in the region of junction will recombine resulting in the lack of carrier in the region near the junction uh when you connect a p type material to n type material there will be a junction and uh, at the place of junction we will have a depletion region the region of uncovered positive and negative ions is called depletion region due to the depletion of carriers in the region now to explain the de depletion region uh, we can use this diagram uh, here you can see we have connected a p type material to n type material and where they join actually or at the point of junction we can see this region is labeled as depletion region why we call it depletion region because it have almost no free carriers available or the carriers are depleted in this region why the free carriers are depleted in this region they, they that is because of recombination process this is depletion region and in this region when we make the junction of p type and n type material both electron and holes recombine leaving behind just positive and negative ions so that is why the name suggested for this region was depletion region now uh, semiconductor diode is just constructed with uh the junction of a p type material to n type material and we have two leads here uh one we call anode and the other one we call cathode these leads are used to apply external voltage on this device if you want to see the symbol of diode then this is the symbol of diode which points in the direction from p2 n type region if p type material is uh, on the left side and n type material is on the right side then the arrow head will be from left to right and conventional current will flow in the direction of this arrow head now since this is two terminal device and we have to apply some external voltage on these two terminal in order to make it function so there can be three different conditions of applying external voltage application of external voltage is called biasing 
so biasing of diode can be in three way one way is there is no bias that means we apply no external potential or zero volt is applied on the terminal of this diode and the other way is when we apply uh, positive uh, voltage that is we connect positive terminal of battery to p type and negative terminal of uh, battery to n type and there is some positive value of that battery source that will be forward bias case and the other one is reverse bias that is we connect negative terminal to p type and positive terminal to n type so we will call it reverse biasing of the diode so discussion of uh, no bias condition in the absence of an applied bias voltage the net flow of charge in any one direction of a semiconductor diode is zero of course when we apply no external voltage the net current flow through the diode should be zero but what happen uh, physically uh, in in this uh, diode or across this depletion region we can see in detail uh, when we connect p type n type material if there is some uh, negative charge carriers here negative charge carrier in p type material which we call them minority carrier if there are some minority carrier these are electrons in p type material near to depletion region they they will move from p type to n type region due to attraction of these positive ions similarly there are some holes in p uh, n type material which we call minority carrier in n type region of course holes are minority carrier in n type region and they uh, move from n type to p type region due to attraction of these negative ions or in other explanation you can say that if electron which are minority carriers in p type region get sufficient kinetic energy and they diffuse into the n type region across this depletion region then we say that uh, electrons have moved uh, from p type to n type region and we represent them with this uh, uh, vector which is moving from left to right and we call it minority carrier flow minority carrier flow so and similarly the minority carriers in n type region which are holes if they diffuse into this p type region due to attraction of the negative ion then we label it uh, or represent it with this vector which is ih and it is flowing from right to left that is from n type to p type region so minority carrier flow of electron is in the direction from left to right and minority carrier of holes is from right to left similarly uh, in the case of majority carriers if in n type region the majority carriers which are electrons they get sufficient kinetic energy and they diffuse into the p type region to recombine with these deficiencies of electron which are whole then we represent the flow of the majority carriers with this vector now the flow of electrons from n type to p type region is majority carrier flow 
similar kind of discussion can be applied to the majority carrier holes in P type region to the region of N type uh, to the N type region. And we represent that flow with these vectors. Now, if you can see the minor minority carrier flow uh, from right to left, which are whole, and majority carrier flow, which are from left to right, again, these are whole, they are almost equal, and they cancel out their effect. And minority carrier flow, that is, uh, which is from left to right that is from p type to n type region so this uh, flow is electronic current flow that is uh, ie and the uh, magnitude of this vector is equal to the magnitude of this majority carrier flow that is n to p type region so they actually cancel out uh, each other's effect in this case, the net current flow from P type to N type region through the depletion region will be equal to zero. That is, we call it ID equal to zero. ID equal to zero. Because uh, the net, uh, because the minority carrier flow and majority carrier flow, they cancel out each other's effect. Now, reverse bias condition. Reverse bias condition is uh, achieved when we connect the positive terminal of battery to N-type material and the negative terminal is connected to P-type material. That is opposite to the convention uh, P for positive and if we connect negative terminal to P type material and positive terminal of the battery to N type material, this is called reverse bias condition. Now in this case, the width of depletion region will be increased. Uh, how the width of depletion region will increase the large number of free carriers uh, free electron drawn to positive potential of the applied voltage uh, explanation of this sentence on diagram when you connect positive terminal to the n-type material the large number of electrons will be attracted to this positive terminal of the battery that means if the depletion region was uh, this one now electrons present here will also move towards positive terminal of the battery leaving no charge carrier free charge carrier in this region and leaving only the positive ion that means there is another layer of positive ion stacked here so uh, the width of depletion region will be increased Similarly, negative terminal will attract holes and the charge carriers present at this, uh, the, at this position will move towards negative terminal leaving behind only ions and the stack of ion will increase so the overall width of depletion region will increase. And we uh, remember we define depletion region as the region without charge carrier. So region without charge carrier will increase. The majority carrier flow will be zero. Why majority carrier flow will be zero? Because majority carrier uh, in n-type material are electron and majority carrier in p-type uh, material or holes so no electron almost no electron will flow from the n to p type material so that is majority carrier flow will be zero while there will be minority carrier flow due to reverse bias uh, potential 
The number of minority carriers, however, entering the depletion region will not change. So if we discuss minority carriers, so in P-type region, electrons are minority carriers. Although uh, the barrier is increased or we can say depletion region is increased, but we have attraction of positive terminal here towards this electron. So if this electron overcome the repul uh, uh, repulsion of these ions and move from P type to N type material that will cause minority carrier flow. The current that exists under reverse bias condition is called reverse saturation current and is represented by IS. So with the movement of minority carrier we call it reverse saturation current because this is due to minority carrier and why we call it saturation current uh, because it gets saturated or it gets to maximum value uh, in very little time that is the term saturation comes from the fact that it reaches its maximum level quickly and does not uh, change significantly with the increase of reverse bias potential why it gets saturated so early because there are limited number of minority carriers in both uh, type of material so the flow will be uh, maximum within a uh, small amount of time so when you increase reverse bias potential that will increase depletion region or that will not increase reverse saturation current Now the third condition which is forward bias condition this can be achieved by att uh, attaching the positive terminal of battery to P type material and the negative terminal of battery to the N type material. A forward bias or on condition is established by applying the positive potential to P type material and negative potential to the N type material. The application of forward bias potential VD will pressure electron in n-type material and holes in p-type material to recombine with the ions near the boundary and reduce the width of depletion region. Now if you see uh, the negative terminal is connected to n-type material that will push these electrons near to the terminal towards depletion region. Now uh, depletion, these electrons will move to the depletion region so that we, we have few charge carriers here now that means reduction of depletion region, reduction of the width of depletion region. Similarly uh, the holes are being pushed or repelled by this positive terminal that diffuse into the depletion region so we have now free carriers available here reducing the width of depletion region now since a uh, depletion region was behaving like a barrier or uh, resistance to the flow of current now the barrier is reduced so we can expect the uh, current flow from P to N type material. As the applied bias increased in magnitude, the depletion region will continue to decrease in width until a flood of electron that can pass through the junction resulting in an exponential, exponential rise in current. That is when you uh, keep on increasing this VD that will uh, reduce the width of depletion region until there is a flood of uh, carriers entering from P2 N type region or uh, electrons are moving from N to P type region so conventional current flow direction is from P2 
and type region. Now forward bias condition will reduce the width of depletion region or uh, we can say our current is moving through the diode and the diode is in on condition. In symbol uh, you can see when you apply positive terminal of the battery to anode and negative terminal to cathode then the current fl will flow from positive to negative terminal in the direction of this arrowhead and a voltage drop of VD will occur on this uh, diode or that is the voltage drop against this depletion region. Now uh, this current can be defined with the Shockley equation which, uh, which says that ID is equal to IS into E raised to power VD by NVT minus 1 where IS is the reverse saturation current, VD is the applied forward bias voltage across the diode, N is ideality factor which is a function of operating condition and the physical construction. It has a range of 1 and 2 depending upon wide variety of factors. So generally we will assume N is equal to 1 in this equation where Vt is the thermal voltage which can be determined by this equation Vt is equal to K into T T Kelvin by Q where K is Boltzmann constant with this value 1.38 into 10 raised to power minus 23 joules per Kelvin and T is the absolute temperature in Kelvins that can be uh, uh, measured or calculated with this value 273 plus temperature in centigrade while Q is the magnitude of electronic charge which is 1.6 into 10 to power 19 coulombs so uh, Shockley's equation define the behavior of diode that is how much current uh, through the diode uh, how much current uh, will flow to, through the diode if we apply some external voltage that is VD. Now from the Shockley's equation we can draw the diode characteristic curve which will de uh, define in its all region of operation. Uh, when you connect diode in forward bias that will operate in this uh, region when there is no bias or there is no external voltage that is no bias condition it means there is no voltage drop and there is no current flowing through the diode that is we are at origin and this this part is for reverse bias condition when you connect negative terminal of battery to the P type uh, region or the anode of diode. So uh, expanding the Shockley's equation in this way that multiplication of IS uh, with these two factors will give us ID is equal to IS e power VD by NVT minus IS. So now we have two factors or two terms in this equation. For the positive values of VD that means when you connect diode in forward bias that is plus minus VD uh, the first term of the above equation will grow very quickly and totally overpower the effect of second term so as we know there is an exponential term here in the first term so if you uh, put some positive value uh, in the power of E that means this will grow exponentially and IS is very small amount of current which is reverse saturation current and generally it is in pico or nano ampere range so this is very small amount 
as compared to the first term so we can ignore this uh, yes in forward bias condition and we can generally write this equation in uh, we can write Shockley's equation for forward bias condition like this that is id is approximately equal to is e power vd by n vt remember this is only for vd positive now if you uh, want to plot this equation for the forward bias condition then you will get this curve the dotted black line is actually plot of uh, this equation while the blue line is actual commercial uh, the curve of practical device which is uh, commercially available Now for the negative values of VD, the exponential term drops very quickly. As we know, uh, for the positive exponential term, the curve grows very quickly, while for the negative value, this term will drop very quickly. As you increase the value in negative side, this will drop very quickly. That means the value, uh, the first term will be too small as compared to this is so for the reverse bias region that is vd negative id can be written as id is approximately equal to minus is so for the reverse bias condition we have id is equal to is remember this is the graph of vd versus id Now for VD is equal to 0, putting VD is equal to 0 will give us this relation that will give us ID is equal to 0 milli ampere. So that means we are at origin of for the no bias condition we have VD is equal to 0 and ID is equal to 0. One thing is to be uh, noted in this graph that uh, VD is uh, in the units of tens of a volt while ID is in milliampere range. So the scale should be in milliampere range while VD scale is in tens of a volt. And for the negative side this is tens of a volt means 10, 10 volt minus 20 volt minus 30 volt and so on. This is for negative region. And in this uh, negative side of ID axis, the scale is in micro ampere. Why is uh, why these scales are mentioned like this? Because for the positive uh, side or for the forward bias condition we have some new voltage which is always less than one volt for silicon diode so uh, the scale from 0 to 1 will be enough and the current is normally in milliampere range while for the negative side we have current scale in micro ampere because for the reverse bias condition we uh, only is is flowing through the diode and is is in micro or pico ampere range breakdown region the reverse bias potential that result in this dramatic change in characteristics is called the breakdown potential and is given the label of VPV that is reverse breakdown voltage. Now if you see this is the simpler, uh, simpler characteristic curve of a diode. In negative side, if you keep on increasing the reverse bias potential, a time will come when 
there is a large amount of current will flow through the diode and that point or that region is called reverse breakdown region or we call, we can call it as zener region the maximum reverse bias potential that can be applied before entering the breakdown region is called peak inverse voltage referred to uh, simply as piv rating or peak reverse voltage which can be called as prv so piv is the maximum voltage you can apply in reverse side uh, to any diode if you apply a voltage which is greater than piv uh, rating then diode will uh, uh, enter into its breakdown region and if this is a normal silicon diode then there is no point of uh, coming back that means device is damaged while zener diodes are normally used in uh, this zener region we will explain this when we are going to discuss zener diode now the question can be raised here that why this is the sharp rise in current we can call it as an avalanche effect if you remember that we said in reverse bias condition there is the current flowing that we call is or minority carrier flow now if you keep on increasing this reverse bias potential there will be a time when the electrons uh, when the holes in negative in n type region an electron in p type region will get sufficient kinetic energy so that they can create more and more ions that means uh, one electron will hit another atom and uh, will make another free electron so now there are two electrons they are being pushed or being attracted by this uh, large reverse bias potential so they will create 4 and 4 will create 8 and the process will continue until there is a flood of electron uh, flood of uh, charge carriers will flow through the depletion region and if this is a normal diode that will damage the diode so we call it as avalanche effect which is due to minority carrier flow So uh, the breakdown region is achieved in reverse bias condition when you apply voltage which is greater than its PIV rating. PIV rating we can find in its uh, in the data sheet of this device. Now, if we want to compare uh, the diode constructed with germanium, silicon, and gallium arsenide. This graph will uh, actually compare the behavior of these three materials. So for the germanium device, the knee voltage, the knee means where the sharp rise will occur is 0.3 volt in the forward bias condition. While for uh, silicon material, the knee voltage uh, is 0.7 volt and for gallium arsenide the knee voltage is 1.2 volt similarly uh, the gallium arsenide have larger piv rating and smaller reverse saturation current normally it is desirable that uh, we should have less saturation current so gallium arsenide device have large PIV rating and small uh, reverse saturation current. While silicon have uh, the values in the center which is fair amount of uh, reverse saturation current is flowing and it have this PIV rating less than gallium arsenide. While germanium have large amount of reverse saturation current and it have less PIV rating.
so intrinsic carrier uh, which we have earlier defined that the carriers intrinsic carriers which are present at room temperature per cubic centimeter of that material for gallium arsenide the value is 1.7 into 10 raised to power 6 silicon 1.5 into 10 raised to power 10 and for the germanium it is 2.5 into 10 raised to power 13 so germanium have more intrinsic carrier that is why it have large reverse saturation current this graph will compare uh, the difference of operating temperature how temperature will affect the behavior of uh, the device in this graph we have silicon silicon material diode which have any voltage of 0.7 volt which have any voltage of 0.7 volt so how temperature uh, affects the behavior of silicon diode in the forward bias region the characteristics of a silicon diode shift to left at the rate of 2.5 millivolts per centigrade in percent uh, per centigrade degree increase in temperature so that means uh, in forward bias condition the curve will move with the rate of 2.5 millivolt per degree centigrade rise in temperature as temperature is increasing the curve will move in the left uh, from right to left direction and we can see at room temperature if we have the knee voltage of 0.7 volt and the blue one is the curve for the room temperature and now if the temperature which is operating temperature rises to 125 degree centigrade now this will be the resulting curve that is <coughs> the curve have moved with the rate of 2.5 millivolt per degree centigrade rise in temperature similarly decreasing temperature will have the opposite effect that is this curve will move from its position to the right that is 2.5 millivolt per degree uh, centigrade decrease in temperature this will move towards right now in reverse bias region the reverse current of a silicon diode doubles for every 10 degree centigrade rise in temperature that means if temperature increases the reverse saturation current will increase with this rate of uh, twice for every 10 degree centigrade rise in temperature the reverse breakdown voltage of a semiconductor diode will increase with the temperature will increase with the temperature that means if temperature is increasing the reverse breakdown voltage will also increase now uh, if you consider the application of diode diode have many application one application is used as switch so if we use diode as a switch then we have to have its uh, ideal characteristics here ideal characteristics mean for the forward bias case it conducts current uh, for the forward bias case it's, it conducts the current and for the reverse bias case it stops the current similar to the switch open or switch close the semiconductor diode behave in a manner similar to a mechanical switch in which uh, in that it can control whether the current will flow between the two terminals in this diagram the switch is closed that means diode is forward bias 
and current is flowing in this direction in the direction of the arrowhead of this diode the semiconductor diode is different from a mechanical switch in the sense that when switch is closed it will only permit uh, permit current to flow in one direction that is the difference between gen, uh, general mechanical switch and diode is that switch can pass current in both direction while uh, in diode there is only one direction of current flow that is from a node to cathode and the direction of uh, this arrowhead shows that the current should flow from positive to negative terminal while reverse saturation current is unwanted thing if we ignore this or we can uh, if we uh, equate it with uh, zero then it means there is no current flowing when switch is open or you can say when diode is reverse bias there is no current flowing through the diode only reverse saturation current is flowing which we generally ignore or this is unwanted uh, quantity so uh, discussing this on characteristic curve the black one is the characteristic curve of a diode uh, actually is a it is a characteristic curve of a silicon diode because the new voltage is 0.7 volt now the on the similar graph if we plot the characteristics of a mechanical switch that will be like this that means when you connect positive terminal here and negative terminal here current will flow without any drop at this switch while for the case of diode we have a drop of 0.7 volt we have a drop of 0.7 volt and for the reverse bias condition or the case of open switch there is no current flowing while for in the case of diode is is flowing is is flowing which is small but if you uh, consider it, it it means that there is a small amount of current flowing in the opposite direction of this arrowhead so this is the difference between an ideal and a practical uh, practical switch or when you want to use diode as a switch this will be the difference between a mechanical and the diode switch okay this is the end of this lecture we will discuss it uh, in the class if you have any question you can ask me in the class